Hi everybody, I'm Scott Rouse uh, with CR Instruments and today I wanted to show you the uh, software app, uh, the Smart Interface Program uh, for the 207i. Our Smart Interface Program software apps are a suite of applications that we've developed that make setting up uh, and programming and then reviewing the data for the 207i a real breeze. So I want to take you through that and show you just how easy it is. First thing we need to do is uh, hook our computer up to this 207i. We have a USB cable uh, which we provide to do that with. Uh, open up your meter. Here's your USB port. All right, you want to take your USB cable, plug it into your USB port. So now I want to open a smart interface application. All right, I'm ready to open uh, the uh, SIP uh, smart interface program application. So double click on that. Uh, and you'll see the port settings come up. Uh, pick whatever port you're using. In my case, I'm going to be using COM port 5. And let's open the port. We're looking at the 207i Smart Interface Portal main screen. Uh, here you can see from left to right, you have the meter data. Second uh, piece of it is your meter display. Uh, the meter display displays the flow units, the energy units, the flow rate, the energy rate, uh, the totalized values, temperature input, temperature output the status of your signal, whether you have a good signal or not, any alarms that are going on. So all of the vital uh, data is displayed in this spot. You can pick flow by itself if you're just using a flow meter. Uh, and here you see flow in the units that you've selected and your totalized flow. If you're using an energy meter, you can look at the energy values, BTUs per hour, gigajoules per second, uh, whatever you picked. And you're in an outlet temperature displayed there as well. Or you can look at both. In addition to the main screen, you have uh, a section called meter control. And that's uh, a section where we have the various applications that the uh, smart interface portal can support. One of the, the key issues with uh, an ultrasonic meter is setup, the basic setup of the unit. We've got an application called Quick Start where we can set this meter up very quickly. So I'd like to show that to you. So we're going to select the Quick Start button. Select uh, whether you're using English units or metric units. Step one is setting up the pipe outer diameter. So you need to know what the pipe outer diameter is. You enter that number, proceed to the next step. Then it's going to ask you what the wall thickness is. You can look up the wall thickness if you know the pipe schedule. You can measure the wall thickness if you have a thickness gauge. Uh, enter the pipe wall thickness, proceed to the next step. Step three is what is the pipe material. There's a drop-down menu of uh, various materials that a pipe can be made out of. Step four is if the pipe has a liner. Some pipes have a liner on the inside to uh, cut down on uh, rust and, and things like that. The next step is what's inside the pipe. What are you measuring? Uh, usually that might be water, but there are a lot of other fluids in the pull-down menu that you can look at. Kerosene, oil, peanut oil, lots of different ones. So select the fluid that you want to measure and proceed on to the next step. The next step is what is the temperature of the fluid inside the pipe? Now the meter can actually measure that if you have uh, the optional temperature inputs or you can tell the meter what the temperature is at this point. So enter that. Step eight, you need to identify whether you're using a standard uh, temperature version or a high temperature version. Standard versions are available in clamp-on and insertion. The high temperature version, uh, we have clamp-on versions of that. I mean, for example, I have the uh, clamp-on transducers here um, clamped onto the pipe. I have a set of insertion transducers as well that act insert through the pipe wall into the fluid itself. All right, step nine is what transducer mounting configuration are you using? There are various methods to mount the transducers on the pipe. What I have here is a V-mount, but there are other ways to do that. You need to tell the meter what you're using. If you want to learn more about what those types of uh, mounting methods are, you click on the Learn More button, and it will tell you the various mounting methodologies that you can use. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll use V-mount. And the next step, the meter will consider all the information that we've just uh, inputted and tell you how far apart to uh, space the transducers. In this case, the recommended sensor spacing is 4.89 inches. So I would essentially take a ruler and measure from the face of one transducer to the face of the other and approximately uh, make that measurement 4.89 inches, get as close as I can. All right, so we're finishing up. We've put our transducers on the pipe. We've approximated the spacing. Now it's time to fine tune uh, our transducer spacing. So step 11, the meter is going to evaluate transducer spacing 
and it is going to uh, actually show us what the signal looks like and make some determinations about is this a healthy signal or is this a good signal or is this a poor signal. So let's take a look at what we are seeing here. All right, here you see the sensor waveform. So this is the actual pulse that is being transmitted from the upstream transducer to the downstream transducer and then the other way. What we want to do to get a healthy signal is to take this, uh, the beginning of this pulse, put this arrival marker, as we call it, this uh, up and down arrow here, between these two goal posts. So these are the goal posts. This is the arrival marker that marks the beginning of the pulse. And for optimal performance, that needs to be in between these two uh, goal post markers. So if you need to make some adjustments, leave one sensor fixed, move the other sensor towards or away until you get the arrival marker in between the goal posts. Once you have all that, you have a good signal. And you verify that with the final step. It will look at your signal quality, your TOM over TOS, and you're ready to start taking measurements. We used quick start to set the meter up to measure flow. That was uh, pretty simple. Now we're going to do the same thing with energy. So if you're making an energy measurement, you can use the Energy Pro Setup app uh, to set your energy measurement up. So we'll select the Energy Pro Setup. And again, it's divided into steps. In this case, three steps. Um, step one is to set up the basic energy measurement. What units do you want to use? How do you want to calculate energy? There are various methods to do that. Put the basics in for step one on how you want to actually make the measurement. Step two is to identify uh, what the temperature input source is. Uh, you can have a PT100 sensor. We have insertion versions of those. We have a, a clamp-on version that you can use, uh, or you can you know, use your own, purchase your own. Or uh, the second choice is to use a 4 to 20 analog input, so a temperature transmitter uh, that you can, uh, there are various models that you can uh, uh, get for that. In this case, let's select a PT100. So step two is to identify that we are using PT100s. And then step three is to set up the PT100 uh, and, and basically tell the meter what is this measuring. It can measure the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature. Those are the two typical measurements, so the hot leg and the cold leg. Or it can measure any combination of the two, the temperature inlet, temperature compensation temperature, uh, various combinations of those. So you tell it what you want it to measure, you set both of those up and you're complete. You're ready to make an energy measurement. Thank you.